Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I will be leading you through today's experiment. Today's experiment is experiment three, entitled Density. It's a four-part experiment. The first part will be determine the density of a regularly shaped object. So what we're going to do there is measure the length, the width, and the height of a cube, and determine the cube's volume by using the formula, volume equals length times width times height, and then take the mass of that cube, and you'll have the density. Remember, density is mass over volume, or grams over milliliters, or grams over centimeters cubed. Part two of today's experiment will be determining the density of an irregularly shaped object. So we're going to take an object in the lab that has an irregular shape, which means we can't use a mathematical formula to determine its volume. We'll have to get it, the volume that is, by water displacement. We'll show you how to do that later on in today's video. Uh, getting the mass of that object is as simple as putting it on the scale. Remember, density is mass divided by volume. So once you have the volume and the mass of the object, you have its density. Part three, density of a liquid. We'll be uh, showing you later on in this video how to measure volume accurately using a pipette and a pipetment and how to weigh the, the mass of a liquid after you've determined its volume. Finally, part four, we'll be using a hydrometer to determine the specific gravity of a liquid, actually of two liquids. And I'll show you later on in the video how to read a hydrometer. Now with that, don't forget to bring your safety glasses, wear proper clothing, and come to the lab with a nice positive attitude and we should be done with plenty of time for questions at the end. To measure the length of the line, first you want to identify the metric side of your measuring device. Now this is the metric side. It's graduated in millimeters and centimeters. So that's the first thing you want to do. The next thing you want to do is identify the value of every little line or every little tick mark or every little graduation on this device. Let's take a look between 5 and 6. This 5 indicates 5 centimeters. This 6 indicates 6 centimeters. Now between here and here is 1 centimeter. Now these little tick marks between the 5 and the 6 correspond to 0.1 centimeters. So for example, this is 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, and so on. So every little graduation between the 5 and the 6 is 0.1 centimeters. So this ruler will read the first decimal place. Now let's take our device and put it up to our line that we want to measure. From the zero side of the ruler, place that against the left-hand side of the line as best you can. Looks like it's got it. And then line the right side up with the other side of the line. And there we go. Looks pretty good. Now let's see. This appears to be greater than 7 and less than 8. So it's going to be 7 decimal point. Now, for my eyes, this looks like it's just below the 0.6. It's certainly bigger than 0.5, but to me it looks like it's just below the 0.6. So I'm going to say this is 7.5. That's the first decimal place. Now we have to estimate one more digit. We need one more digit in this measurement, and that will be the estimated digit. So I'm going to say this is 7.59. It's not quite hitting the 0.6 hash mark. I think it's just below it. Now, the estimated digit, you may actually think it's 7.60. You may think it hits the line exactly for 7.6. You may think it's slightly over 7.6. You may think it's 7.61. Or you may even think it's 7.59. And those measurements would be OK. Now let's put in the unit centimeters. 7.59 centimeters would be that measurement for that line. That would be three significant figures. This digit, although it's the estimated digit, 
is still extremely important and must be there for your measurement to be correct to be correct excuse me to be correct okay now that's how you measure the length of anything not just a line using a standard ruler Hi, my name is Dione Antigua, and today I'll be showing you how to find volume by water displacement. Today you'll be using a distilled water bottle, a regular object, plastic graduated cylinder, and a string. First you will fill a plastic graduated cylinder to about halfway using distilled water. Be sure to record this initial volume in your notes. You will then lower the regularly shaped object using the hook located on the object and a piece of string. Slowly lower the object into the graduated cylinder and record this final volume in your notes. You, will, you can then find the, the volume of the object by subtracting the initial volume from the final volume. Part three of today's experiment will be measuring the density of a liquid. To do that, we must know the mass of the liquid and its volume. To determine the volume of a liquid, we will be using a pipette. This is a pipette I'm holding in my hands. This is a 10.00 milliliter pipette. What you will do is you will fill the pipette to the zero line, put the meniscus on the zero line, and that will be 10.00 milliliters. Now, in the old days, people used to actually use these like a straw. We don't do that anymore for obvious safety reasons, so we will be using what is known as a pipetman. A pipetman is simply a device that is used to suck up the liquid into the pipette. To attach the pipette to the pipetman, Put your fingers as close to the end of the pipetman as you can. Put your thumb and forefinger as close as you can to the edge of the pipette and simply push them together. Now don't push them too hard together, just make them a little bit snug and that's all you really need to make this thing work for you very well. To know if it's set right, just give it a quick little tug, if it doesn't come apart, it's okay. Now let's move on to see how we use a pipetman in determining the volume, the de excuse me, the density of a liquid. Now that we've successfully attached the pipette to the pipetman, let's see how we use a pipette to transfer a liquid. Take the tip of the pipette, put it into the liquid you want to measure, roll your thumb on the ball of the pipetman, or the wheel. You notice that the liquid is entering the pipette. Use the wheel to move the meniscus up and down, so you can put the meniscus on the zero, zero point. Once you've got the meniscus where you want it, simply transfer the liquid to another beaker, or I'm just going to pour it back into the same beaker. Do this by hitting this little trigger right here, push it in, and the liquid comes out. And there it is. That's how you use a pipette. Now that we've learned how to attach the pipetman to the pipette, let's see how we would use it to determine the density of a liquid. Now here I have a copper sulfate solution that we're going to determine the density of. This is not in your part of your lab, so it's a completely different liquid that you will not be using. So do not use the numbers that you're going to see here on this video, um, because this is not some, a liquid that you will be using. Now, to determine the density of a liquid, just like anything else, you need to know the mass of the liquid and the volume. The pipette can take care of the volume. Now we need to know the mass of the liquid. How we're going to do this is we're going to take an empty beaker, we're going to place it on a scale, and record the mass of the empty beaker. Record that in your notes, whatever number you get in class. Now take the pipette with the pipetman, put it into the solution you want to measure the density of, and simply roll the ball on the pipetman. As you can see, the water level is rising up. Put the meniscus on the zero zero mark as best you can. Take the pipette, move it over to the beaker that's on the scale, click
click the little trigger release on the pipetman and the liquid will flow into the beaker. Now, record the new volume of the beaker and the liquid. And if you subtract the mass of the empty beaker from the beaker with the liquid, you will now know the mass of the liquid you transferred. The volume from the pipetman and the, from the pipette and the pipetman should be 10.00 milliliters. Mass divided by volume is the density of the liquid. This is the setup for part four, measuring specific gravity using a hydrometer. Remember, specific gravity is the density of a liquid divided by the density of water. The density of any liquid is expressed in grams per milliliter, and the density of water is also expressed in grams per milliliter. If you divide one by the other, you will get a unitless number. Part four. Here we have a blown up portion of the hydrometer. This is the top of the hydrometer here, the part that's not submerged in the liquid. And these are the graduations that you'll see when you look at a hydrometer. This is 700 as written. This is 750 as written. You just have to remember this is, this is actually 0 0.700 and this is 0 0.750. Now, just like any other device, you want to figure out what every hash mark means before you try to use it. This is 700. This is 750. So therefore, this is 710, 720, 730, 740, 750. If we turn it just a little bit, now we can see there's actually some more hash marks over here. This hash mark is 705, 710, 715, 720, 725, and so on. Now you want to measure this to where the meniscus touches on one of these hash marks and try not to forget your estimated digit. Now that we've learned how to read a hydrometer, let's take a look at how we use one in practice. All you have to do is take the hydrometer, place it gently inside of the liquid that you want to take the specific gravity of. Don't drop it, set it in there gently, and the hydrometer will float in the liquid. Now try your best to keep it from touching the sides. Be patient with it, you can get it not to touch, and let it float there gently. If it bobs a little bit, let it calm down. Now let's zoom in, and let's take a look at the meniscus close up, and now we can see this is where the, water, the liquid level hits the hydrometer, and we're going to read the specific gravity off the device.